What's up friends, my name's Georgie, I'm a breathwork specialist and performance coach helping people gain core confidence through the power of the breath. It is a pleasure as always to have you listening in to the Just Breathe podcast, thank you so much for tuning in. I'll be talking all things breathing, helping to empower you guys to use the power of your breath to harness your body's and minds. I am so excited for you guys to listen in on today's conversation. Today I will be chatting to my friend Cara Mia. Her unique therapeutic approach to your gut mind connection can quite literally transform your health and I've experienced this firsthand. Cara Mia is incredibly talented. She does bioresonance, nutritional therapy, hypnotherapy, and she offers you a truly holistic solution. You may choose to use all three or just one aspect. Karamia also provides spiritual guidance in her sessions. She invites you to connect with your own body and mind to understand what you need and like I bang on about on my Instagram whenever I'm talking about the breath the key is awareness and connection connection to self and connection to what's around you Karamia really really is such an inspiration in terms of her knowledge of health and we got talking a lot about connection actually and how important it is how you can eat all the kale you can do all the yoga you can do all the breath work but if you are not feeling a sense of love and connection 85 to 90 percent of the time your health will suffer because your nervous system your body your endocrine system is always listening and Karamia really put that in a beautiful beautiful way so I'm really really excited for you to tune in I really hope you enjoy it a little bit of housekeeping don't forget to like share and subscribe to the just breathe podcast it really helps to keep on building that breathing community the more people talking about breathing the more people becoming empowered by the breath the better all right, let's dive in to today's powerful, powerful conversation. I really, really hope you enjoy it. This is episode 53 of Just Breathe with Cara Mia Vernon. Mia in the house. Hello. Hi, Georgie. Nice to see you. I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. Honestly, I mean, actually, for anyone listening, I haven't known Karamia that long, <laughs> but we just sort of click straight away. And she is just this sort of wealth of knowledge um, that that just inspired me from the get go. So I knew I had to bring her on. Uh, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. And what an honor and pleasure. Great pleasure to be here with you and whoever else shows up. And thank you for listening. So. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, it's, if it's okay with you, Karamia, um, I know I have even experienced your services firsthand <laughs> and what you do for people. Um, but I'm going to let you tell everyone yourself because, you know, it's it's so much better that way. But okay. firstly, you know, so what what is your thing? And, My thing. You know how how did you step onto that that path? Well, I guess I could start with my parents. Um, it, the doctors kind of let them down in the early in the early days, and I, I brought this book. That I, I don't know if you you can see it. It's called Touch for Health. Okay. And, so my parents were having touch for health meetings, a little bit like a Tupperware party um, back in the 70s. This was actually done in 1973. The women in this book have underarm hair. Ew. Yuck. Anyway, so it was early kinesiology that they were learning in their houses to help each other. Wow. And so my parents went into like a deep dive into the alternative world when I was, you know, a, a child. and. We went to see a German doctor when I was about 11, um, again, we're talking early 80s, um, who had a huge long list before you went there, like no deodorant, no perfumes, no hairsprays. So it was um, an early bioresonance machine, massive machine in those days. And it told me at 11 that I had a rubbish liver, um, a rubbish gallbladder, I'd need glasses, and a whole bunch of other things that all came true. I had my gallbladder at 24 and we've seen nutritionists and naturopaths from the get-go and my naturopath I had from all through my teenage years 
was such an inspiration to me that she was the reason I am who I am today. Like she gave me that, she was so life-changing. So that was always in the back of my head, but I didn't have, and you know, maybe, you know, I so admire you, you know, being so young and following your dream. I just didn't have the self-confidence to do that. I, I think even though I started studying it and it was my first love, and I remember being in an advertising college and offering people green beans and saying, no, you should really eat these green beans instead. They're great raw. I mean, you've never had green beans raw? Wow, you know, and as opposed to the chips in the, in the cafeteria. So I was always about the alternative health side of things, and it was just standard in our house. Um, anyway, then you get to you're taken up in the other world and, I was studying, I did my nutrition, um, my anatomy, physiology, then my nutrition, and then I was studying my naturopathy and then my homeopathy for three years and um, all the courses, courses, courses. But as you probably are aware that it's really hard to get a full time job and pay your mortgage as a nutritionist or a homeopath or really a lot of jobs out there. It's all based on one on one. And it's a little daunting to go from a full-time job where you're paid nine to five and I to suddenly not having any clients and being out there in the world. Yeah. So this is where colonic irrigation saved my life. <laughs> so I went from a job as a managing in a housing association to going, I just, you know, the universe puts puts things in front of you and you keep getting fired and hitting all these walls and I thought you know what I was doing the law of attraction homework I was listening I was doing all the things you're supposed to do and I just kept getting called to you know do something in this world and it wasn't like sticking tubes up people's bums was my first love you know that wasn't really it oh I just so want to do that no no yay, that was <laughs> naked people yay no um i was used to 25 years of phones and computers and i was really happy in that world but um yeah i found myself training in colonic irrigation because i'd been having them since i was 27 so it had been a good oh. and yeah about 10 years that i'd had them on a semi-regular basis and they really worked for me um not having a gallbladder out at 24 um you know, constipation and I, we're friends, we're long term friends, like we know each other really well. So colonics really supported me to just, you know, be better. Yeah. Yeah. I had glandular fever at 30. I think that's the sickest I've ever been in my life. And it was colonics that got me through and just herbs and colonics and just yeah. Anyway, yeah. so yes, colonics got me out of offices. I enjoy the, you know, the I enjoy the modality, you know, I enjoy doing it. I would always want to do them because I actually find them a lot of fun and um, they're great. You know, for some people, they're really great. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the experience to me, it was such a unique experience because it was both terrifying oh. and then such a release. And then once you got rid of the idea of like the whole yeah. butts and, and different thing and poop and things, then yeah. you're like, actually you go a little bit deeper and you realize actually that, you know, the body is either in a state of sort of freedom and curiosity and creativity and playfulness, or mm. it's in this place of heaviness, of stuckness, of mm. doggy, droggy tension, you know, mm -hmm. and I think actually, I mean, I don't know if you'd agree with it, that 85, 90% of the guests are living in that state of heaviness mm. of, in the Western world, you know, mm. of that that you know life is just the way it is that it you you know that it's a slow it's a slog it's a grind even yeah. the word the phrases we use yeah. are a reflection of the physicality of our bodies right the grind the, the grind the daily grind yeah I mean they're probably grind. not your listeners they're, they're the ones that are have actually woken up and gone actually there's more to life than this but for the people that aren't hearing your message and the people that are not our clients they are the ones that are actually head down and distracting themselves with all the you know stuff out there in in the world i mean now everybody's a gut expert you know everybody and their brothers are yeah. gut experts, so, so boring that is true um, <laughs> everybody's an instagram gut expert though. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and people say to me it washes out all your gut bacteria um well show me the proof show me the medical proof um we do have medical evidence that colonics support the immune system Mm -hmm. um there is a study out in that you can google that if you wish um and we have to look at 
the obvious fact that people brush their teeth twice a day, we use stuff to get rid of the bacteria in our mouths and boom, it's right back. You know, as soon as you, those 40,000 species repopulate really quickly. Humans were designed to have, you know, diarrhea all the time. We, people look at me when I say that and go, it's been a very short period that we a understood to wash our hands before we ate something and we understood germ theory for tens of thousands of years tens and tens and tens of thousands of years we would have been walking through the forest going "Ooh, that looks good i think i'll eat that whoops that didn't feel too good we would have had the shits constantly so That's, i never thought about that no wow. people don't yeah wow. indeed and wow. We would have, um, you know, gut bacteria, a lot of the gut bacteria replicate double every 20 minutes. Um, and it's a lot of the, the gut bacteria is in the lumen. So you've got like different layers of the gut. And so the bacteria, which are tiny, 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 tiny things, they're all in that sort of lumen. And the stuff in the middle that we're washing out with purified water is all just waste. And most people's waste you know, people think, oh, you know, I go once a day is because I don't eat very much. Well, most of your daily waste is actually dead you, not food. Oh, penny yeah. drop. Yeah, it's your waste, your mucus, your, you know, a lot of it's water. Um, but a lot of it's, you know, uh, toxins, which is kind of an overused word. But if you can't sweat out a toxin, breathe it out or urinate it out, it's got to be pooped out and the fat soluble toxins have to be pooped out they're not generally you know exhaled or sweated out or urinated out and these are things like hormones and how many you know to those of you out there and to yourself georgie so many women and, and men are also very estrogen dominant at the moment because we're surrounded by plasticized world so how do you get those estrogens excess estrogens out of your body you got to poop it out you know people talk about oh i'm on a detox well if you're eliminatory organs aren't functioning well you've you're basically detoxing with one hand tied behind your back yeah. you know it's it's like saying i'm going to give my car you know an mot but i'm not going to really check the engine it's fine you know you're you're missing a big chunk if you're not pooping well so yeah sounds like a um a lack of awareness and education actually yeah. because it, it, i mean i i'm always saying with the breath that you know you mm -hmm. can do as many sexy breathing techniques as you like but if you don't have, because of course, you know, Wim Hof has blown up and I Boom. say it every time I mention him, I love yeah. Wim Hof. I'm about yeah. to book the most amazing cold exposure experience in Finland. I love wow. Wim Hof. Yeah, I love it. But mm. it's a sexy technique. It's a very, um, it's a very dramatic, yeah. Kind of, yeah, big transformational technique and people do it because they have seen it on Instagram, not because they have an awareness that it will personally benefit their own physiological systems, of course, mm. which everyone's physiological system is somewhat unique in a very yeah. small way, which you all know, I'm sure no two colonics are the same. Right? Even with the same client, you know, you can have a client that's just having a lot of stress in their lives. Um, they could be, I, I call it, you know, airplane bum, you know, they come back from holiday and their guts are a mess. How many women do you know go on holiday and they don't poop? yeah you know, it's like they just get yeah. yeah all of us pretty much um and you know we we have a lot of sweet women um hold their stress in their guts we kind of multitask because we're so good at multitasking we can hold in our back neck and shoulders and in our guts and yeah. sometimes you know a tummy should be nice and soft i should be able to get my hands nice and easy in there and these women come in with I'm, I might as well be pushing on a table. Their guts are so hard. Yeah. And it's like, oh, well, I did a lot of exercise today. It has nothing to do with that. It's you're holding your stress in your gut. And you can imagine if your gut's like this and you're, it's so long-term, you don't even realize, I'm sure you recognize with the breath, people are incapable of breathing into the diaphragm. It's oh, all up here, right? Yeah. Potentially and, to the point of something called dysautonomia, where literally your autonomic nervous system is no longer functioning. Yeah. Properly. It's just stuck in this adrenalized state of fight or flight. Con what's gonna yeah. happen next? What, what, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready for danger. Yeah. And yeah. that's almost commercialized now as a good totally. thing. Totally. Like, sensation i call them sensation seekers yeah in terms of those people who are somewhat unconscious but still go and do the extreme you see in london specifically spin class yeah. 
hit classes, Barry yeah. boot camp, insanity. Yeah. Again, I yeah. love them all. I love them. Yeah. But can you do them with the conscious awareness that they will benefit you at that time? Do you know where in your menstrual cycle they will benefit you? You know, and also a very famous, wonderful uh, physiotherapist, Simon Borg Olivia, very specifically says, any muscle that you cannot relax is useless. They're like, forget about tensing it, but if you can't relax it, does that make sense? So if, if you, everyone focuses on the tensing, the doing, the mm. energizing, but mm. if you can't also relax it, it's the same as the sexy breathing techniques. But if mm. you can't breathe functionally, and if you can't relax, learn to relax your gut, learn to relax your body, mm. then almost that upregulator, that energizer, that stressor that's supposed to be so good for you is in vain because mm. you haven't given the, the yin to the yang. The yin to the yang, I was just about to say that, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's I, I say, I have two sort of catchphrases I've used over the last 15 years, which is, you know, human human being, not human doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you ask these women, um, we probably have a similar sort of client where it's like, they say, I'm almost, it's uncomfortable for me to sit and do nothing. Well, it's because you're so not used to actually sitting and doing nothing you know just be just be and that discomfort of coming down off the cortisol high you know is is uncomfortable for them and this is you know sort of skipping ahead it's like it's so important to do nothing we we are the, the changes in the last lifetime have been so immense um you know everything's you know fast 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 and even just um, like my mother only had five jobs to choose from. And really when you have a baby, you kind of stay home. And, you know, I, that's not your world. I mean, that just, just isn't, that's just not a, something that you'd be capable, you know, allowed really to, to do. So yeah, so many of us are on this treadmill of constant thinking, constant doing. Um, if, a, if something's not productive, a day's not productive, then people beat themselves up, which is a nice dovetail as to why I studied hypnotherapy, because I had all these gorgeous yoga bunnies coming in to see me, eating the kale, eating the yoga, and their guts are a mess. And, you know, and it's like, it, you, you, in many ways, <laughs> you're better off. Yeah, <laughs> you're better off having, uh, you know, you're better off eating crap in some ways and loving yourself and just having a great time and just being mindful and eating it, having that burger or having those chips and fries or whatever it is and going, yeah, you know, this is okay. And no, no beating yourself up than going into the kale and the yoga with this. Friction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the self-loathing if you don't do that. So the reason I, I did the clinical hypnotherapy was because I just thought, I am missing a huge point portion of the naturopathic concept of root cause. You know, Hahnemann, who when I studied three years of homeopathy, he said, you know, three, four hundred years ago, um, Samuel Hahnemann, the guy that invented homeopathy, a German doctor, he said, um, you'll never cure a man who has an unhappy marriage. Now, of course, it's all about men. But interestingly, a man who's unhappy is something like that will never, ever be cured. And he was aware of the emotional effect on the, the the healing, the aspect of healing. So it was um it's been long recognized in the natural world where you know your emotions and your thoughts and your beliefs entirely affect your health. And we can look at, you know, the um the genie in your genes book. I'm sure you're aware of that one by Dawson Church or the biology of belief by Bruce Lipton, how the epigenetics you know, you can be born with the uh, genetics for breast cancer, but they never get switched on because you leave a lifestyle of happiness and health, right? But going down that path of, you know, huge amounts of stress and all the other things all attacks, you know, stack up, the epigenetics change and, you know, unfortunate things can happen with the health. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you know, what's that percentage of serotonin that's made in the gut? Well, interestingly, it's it is really high. Um, some things say seventy, some things say ninety. However, we've recently found out the serotonin. It's almost like Vegas. The serotonin in the gut stays in the gut. It actually doesn't really affect the brain as much. So we're still. That's a, a new twist on it. That, um, and I'm going to have to change because I've been saying the same thing that oh. the serotonin, yeah, is made in the gut, but actually it helps to regulate the gut. 
Okay, so it's all about regular, it, almost it's all about communication between yeah. regions rather than a direct supply. Yeah, now we still don't know. I still think we don't know because the, the emerging science of using probiotics for mental health is is huge and i think we can absolutely see how nutrition affects you know mental health and schizophrenia and the more pathological sides of the mental health spectrum um even you know just neurodivergence and how that's supported with with good health and and good health means good gut bacteria and good gut bacteria means health as well it's you with the human body you know i i think the medical model the current medical model is still looking at like a car even yeah. functional medicine still looks at it a bit like a car you know you take okay. something out and you test it and go "Ooh, we found this um you know, it, it doesn't take into account the entire person. It doesn't take into account any of the energetic bodies. It doesn't take into account the emotional, the spiritual, the energetic. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it explains you before I started breath work, I used to go get a sports massage and mm. almost an hour later, my body would be straight back to how it was before that I'd solved it. Maybe it would last an afternoon. Lovely. But I would always wake up the same with mm. the same tension and I thought you know and really I cast it off a lack of awareness I'd consider myself quite unconscious then of like I just uh, have tight yeah. shoulders I just have tight shoulders yeah. this is who I am I started yeah. to identify actually it was because I was over breathing I was okay. doing 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 and yeah. I was never stopping um yeah. you know because the last 50 years we've had this this thing of FOMO fear of missing out mm. where you can't miss a thing on social media you know if you don't see that story then you're not involved and then mm. you won't know and then you don't know if you haven't posted in three days it's just a catastrophe now and it's actually <laughs> when you you know when you zoom out it's sort of like Actually, I think the best thing for me, and I'm going off on a tangent here, but this, these are my thoughts the last few days where I'm like, the best thing I could probably do for my health rather than worrying about posting on social media is to uh, go to the Lake District for three days, leave my phone at home and just sit. Ooh, home. leave your phone at home. What a great idea. Yeah, yeah. but I think digital detoxes should yeah. be the new vacation thing of like, leave your phone at home because- yeah the phone and the devices and the you know there's a wonderful documentary on netflix about grounding but about the effect mm -hmm. of the, the wi-fi and of course we're all you've, you've talked about these energetic bodies and um you know all, all of of that the we are you can explain it much more than me but we are all sort of electrical beings to a degree mm -hmm. um and that's, of course, going to have an effect on us. But so many yeah. of us are completely unaware. It's almost, I thought about it and I was like, well, yeah, because anytime you mess with nature, yeah. it's going to have an effect. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. We don't necessarily see it. It's like, you know, acute disease. The NHS is brilliant at acute disease. And we should, you know, any natural health practitioner should always work in tandem with the NHS. And we should never be afraid to say, oh. go see your doctor, you know. Oh. Um, but uh, acute disease is I hurt my, you know, I hit my elbow, now it hurts. Whereas chronic disease, you know, diabetes doesn't take, doesn't show up overnight. It's, you know, 50 years in the making. I, you know, an interesting naturopathic principle, which I think is really fun to share is the body has a hierarchy. So it, um, it saves the brain and the heart to last, which is why we die of dementia and heart disease. But that's been building, 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 building probably for 30, 40 years. The healthiest expression of disease or disease is on the skin because it's away from internal organs. It's pushing the disease out. And this is why babies have rashes. And then the problem is we were taught in you know, the three years of homeopathy, then the, the, the child comes to the doctor with rashes and the doctor goes, here's a cream to put it and just suppresses it and pushes it back. Band -aid. Body. Yeah, Band-Aid, um, as opposed to healing the gut, 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 gut. So that little baby needs gut support, yeah, generally. And it, what it goes in the mouth and what comes out is super important. And that's, you can support the baby with that. Anyway, so then what would happen is, the next after after the skin, what's the biggest, um, of course, the skin is the biggest organ, um, you know, then the next one is another another large organ, the lungs become the next to the hierarchy. And this is where the two to three year old will now start to show signs of asthma. Why? Because you put the stuff, the steroids creams on and, the, and the, it hasn't, you didn't deal with the problem, you just shoved it up. So the body has a hierarchy. It will sacrifice the thyroid before it sacrifices the adrenals. It will sacrifice the gallbladder before it sacrifices the liver. So it's, there is a, a hierarchy. And so really, if people 
spend money on their health, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic health before they get to that age, when they see us, you and me, when they're still well, then we can improve their health. We can support their health going forward as opposed to before the NHS picks it up in a blood test. It's too late. Yeah. You know, it's too late. And you're just managing um, symptoms, right? Really? You're just trying to manage the uh, huge array of, um, you know, symptoms that really affect quality of life. And yeah. of course, something I found interesting in, of course, you know, the oxygen advantage is actually based on the Bateko method from the Russian doctor, Dr. Bateko, not potato, Buteko. I did actually hear potato first. Everyone thought, hears potato. potatoes. Yeah. Now you got Dr. my <laughs> Buteko from Russia and his whole thing. Now I know who you're talking about, but cured first thing, thousands I of, potato. <laughs> yeah, he cured thousands of asthmatics, but his work was widely rejected. Number one, because breathing is free. You can't make no. money off the uh, pharmaceutical industry, cannot make yeah. money off it. Um, and yeah. two, because he was stating, which is now, you know, being proven more and more every day, and something I'm sure you'll have something to say on, in that the actual symptoms of asthma are the body's way of trying to bring the body back to homeostasis. Oh, the coughing, yeah, it's always about homeostasis. It's, it's always. not, when everyone thinks the coughing, the wheezing, that, yeah, that's the, that's the asthma, that's the problem. It's like, no, that's the body's way of trying to regulate and correct itself. Yep. You know, you are, if you're, uh, from my point of view, you know, it's obvious that if, if you're over breathing as pretty much all asthmatics are, you need the CO2 to release hemoglobin to release oxygen from the hemoglobin, sorry. So of course, then all your airways and blood vessels will tense up and get smaller. Does it, no, we need to hold on to that carbon dioxide. It's not breathing too much out, we need it. So of course nice. they get tense and tighten and be irritant and then <laughs> wheezing coffee. Wow. wow. You know? And it, but wow. It, I mean, I'm interested on your point on that with other things in terms of that the actual symptoms that arise are not always the what we'd call the, um, the disease, it's actually the body trying to, to correct itself back mm. to that. Um, you know, it's very obvious when you look at like blood pH, right? But I can yeah. never remember the number back to that middle number. It's 7.2, I think. Point something, something. Yeah, 7 point something, something. Um, but that there's no this or that. It's yeah. can we come back to, to the middle point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homeostasis is so key, which brings me to the third thing I do, which is bioresonance testing. So when I graduated, I, there wasn't the, the, you know, the, the functional medicine testing around. And because I was exposed to bioresonance at the age of 11, and I kept seeing bioresonance practitioners throughout my life. And when I moved here, I went to see a woman who um, had an, an early Vega machine. And, you know, she found um, one of the sacs around my heart. There's three sacs, protective sacs around the heart. Oh. And she found that um, atrophication of the pericardium came up. And I didn't know what that really went at the time, but of course, to atrophy is to basically, you know, turn into to rock or to to stop working effectively. And she, you know, she told me the the reason I moved to this country from Canada was was because of heartache. You know, I got divorced. I had to reinvent myself. I just couldn't stay in Canada any longer. I was too sad. Anyway, blah blah. She said it was, you know, her um, solution for this atrophication of the pericardium or in my heart was a book on forgiveness you know and that was really 20, 22 years ago yeah it was a book on forgiveness and there's that classic saying that of course you know revenge or holding anger is really the bitter pill that we poison ourselves with you know when oh. you're angry and you're hateful towards somebody oh. so absolutely and it was that book that she's like because if you don't deal with this heartache Karamia, you will have a heart attack. This is this is just, you know, that's progression of disease. So I'm a huge fan of bioresonance. And also when I graduated, you know, not everybody can afford by, you know, functional medicine testing. It's expensive. Yeah. And it's only that moment, that second, that day. Like people come to me and go, oh yeah, I had a food intolerance test three years ago and I was intolerant to, you know, chickpeas. I haven't touched them since. Ah, what a shame. All that beautiful hummus you've missed out on. Yeah. You know, it changes. The body changes constantly. So functional medicine, although it's fantastic and wonderful and brilliant and very specific, it still can be wrong. It still can be changed the next day. And it's just a glimpse, a snapshot. So when I purchased the bioresonance machine, which I don't think you've seen yet, my love, no. is it sends frequencies into your body. It's like a lie detector. It just asks one question. What brings me back to homeostasis? 
Okay. What brings me back to health? It through, it's looking for capacitance, flow, or resistance stop. So I send 250 frequencies, or it does, of foods into the body, and it goes, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, through your galvanic skin response and a bunch of other stuff. Do I totally understand how it works? No, but I don't understand how my phone works either, but it doesn't stop me using it. Yeah. Um, we also don't understand how gravity works, but it we still do it, and things still do fall. I, do I fully understand how the breath works i would like people some people say to me you're a master of the breath and i say tell me that in 50 years tell me yeah. in 50 years because then yeah. i'll call myself a master you know once i've traveled around the whole world and learned from everyone who's learned from hundreds of generations sure but yeah. right now no 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 i think i know about 10 percent, and that's yeah. you know about yeah a thousand percent more than 95 percent of the population mm. but it is it is min i said i could research one nostril for the rest of my life and i'd only have learned 20 yeah. of it you know right yeah it's it's huge and that's why i actually bought because i know i spent ten thousand quid on this machine i guess 12 years ago because you, the person's body tells me what it needs and the amount of emotional stuff that comes up i mean because oh. it looks at the emotions as well so it'll put things thank you very handily it'll put things in order for me oh. and often the emotions will be in the top 10 as opposed to everything else and you know this is where i would question anybody who says they're a master because as soon as you say you're the best in the world or you're a master at something, you've lost your humility. And to be a good therapist, you have to have humility, you know? So if somebody wants to call you a master, great. They wanna call you a guru, great. But we would never call ourselves, you know, a master, or I would never say I'm the best colonic therapist in London, despite having worked for the Queen's doctor or having seen 12,000 people or, you know, how many colonics I've done. Because the moment I say that, I lose my humility and it means that I know everything and I've stopped learning. So I was well, talking I mean, about the bioresonance and how, yeah, essentially it emotions in the body. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It, it just kind of makes, um, it feels a bit like cheating, but I don't really care because if people get better, that's great. And it's so much more affordable than doing a whole bunch of tests because yeah. we just do, you know, we ask thousands of questions in the hour and a half. So that's, that's my little sales pitch over, but, um, okay, the body is, is keeping the score. That's the thing, right? We yeah. disregard emotions as even connected to the physical body. Yeah. And, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. For anyone that hasn't read that book by Bessel van der Kolk, mm. score, oh my God, yeah. to understand if that's about trauma, but to at least just understand, you know, how interconnected the physical body is. And I'm sure you see this with colonics. No. Well, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of, I mean, not to put anybody off necessarily a colonic, but, um, you know, there's just even recently a, a, a client after the, the treatment just had a huge breakdown, you know, it was, and, you know, and I gave her a big hug for about a minute and a half, you know, and she was just like, where did that come from? And I was like, well, you're holding all that negative stuff in that part of your body and you've just let all that go, you know, let it go. And, uh, People have found it can be incredibly cathartic to get rid of a whole lot of shit at once, you know? Literally, it's, literally. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, remember my point. Go. I remember my point, by the way. So I probably, for anyone listening, I probably edited this out, but I just had a complete <laughs> blank about five minutes ago. It's totally fine. We're all human. Um, but anyway, the human program, which is fantastic. I did a seminar and that these amazing uh, trained Team GB athletes, you know, huge, incredible sports coach. He, and he said the number one principle, the most important thing is play. Mm. He was like, I, any coach that says they have the answer in any field, anything, wellness, sports, whatever, they're bullshitting you. Mm. He's like, the best coaches in the world will say things like, okay, and, you know, and what does that tell us? Okay, what do we need to do next? They'll always be asking questions. And he said, if you don't, if he doesn't or she doesn't approach the finding with a question, and I've got, we've got it, we've got it work yeah. over quite done that yeah. you know it's the work is never done and yeah, that's no. the thing. And like even when I first it was a lesson I had to learn when I started teaching breath because I was working with a, a big triathlete and she was amazing and team GB and like she would say oh that that didn't work for me that protocol for my running and I had to really learn to go oh that's curious okay how about we, we try this this way Mm -hmm. suddenly there was this beautiful process where it was like oh yeah like mm -hmm. that might work for me or or you know Doris let's say but it does not work for the triathlete oh, um, I hear you because that's I mean with the nutrition and naturopathy I mean we we learn protocols you know if somebody has this you give them this yeah. and this is another reason why I bought the machine because it's like 
I can't know it all. I just can't. It's too much pressure. Yeah. And there's been many times where I, you know, I can type in something into it and go, okay, let's try magnesium. And the computer goes, eh, eh, you know, oh. Peter says no. And I have been humbled so many times by this piece of kit. I remember one woman, she had MS and it kept saying melatonin at the top, no matter how many questions, melatonin, melatonin, melatonin. And she slept fine. And I was like, hmm. I don't understand. I don't know why we're getting melatonin so often. This is about seven, six, seven years ago. So after she left, you know, I had my own stash of melatonin that I could give her because it's not really available here. Oops, should I have said that? Anyway, um, I Googled it and it turned out that a study had just been released that said melatonin for MS was massive. Now I bet money that her MS doctor did not know that yet because it had just come out wow. and probably would never even have gone down that path anyway. And she came back and said that the, the changes were huge. The machine knew because her body knew. The body said, I want this and I want that. And it supersedes my knowledge at all times, always, you know, and I can guide it. I can ask, you know, any practitioner is as good as their knowledge and the questions they ask. And their and client, right? Like what? And their client, yeah, and and how they slept that night before and the crap they're going through in their own lives and whether you're a client Monday morning at nine or Friday at five um, and the dynamic between the two of you. Do you trust this person? Do you like this person? Do you, do you feel that they can support you? Are you looking at a nocebo or a placebo? You know, there's so much dynamic going on. Oh my God, yeah. And it, like, as we've just been speaking about how much emotions and the the reaction to or response i should say to the stimulations of our environment and our interpersonal mm -hmm. relationships etc mm -hmm. it's all contributing to everything that the body then expresses and it, it's that whole thing of like we're just responding and receiving responding and receiving and which is why i say with the breath again do as many sexy exercises as you like, but if you can't just sit and breathe and respond and receive and understand how your body responds and receives, mm -hmm. how on earth will you know whether you need to do box breathing to focus or strong breath holds to focus? And people, right. I can tell them that. And I'm like, right. how, how can I tell you that? No, right. I can teach you how to do it. And then I can support you and hold space mm. for you to experience in a safe arena if it works for you. Mm -hmm. But it is never a practitioner's job, unless, of course, it's very physical, like there are medical instruments involved, you know, don't yeah. try and do your yeah. own surgery. Yeah. But it, you know, in a, in a holistic sense, when you're working with a biological function, you know, that is unconscious and, and, and maybe even some, some conscious as well, that you are holding space for that person to explore realms of themselves that they are too scared to explore on their own, which we all are. Yeah. You know, I need and a approach too. We, we indeed indeed and um you know the, back to the to the hypnotherapy you know i i brought the machine to a woman's house who had a stunning life stunning 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 i would have given some of my teeth at the back for this house I really yeah. um and uh she had you know a, a lichen planus um she uh an autoimmune disease of some areas of her body that were really unfortunate and she had a histamine intolerance and a bunch of other stuff going on and some anxiety and stuff Anyway, put her on the machine, the bioresonance, and the first thing that came up was fear, 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 fear. And I was like, you know, Jillian or whatever her name was, you know, why am I getting all this fear? She's like, oh my God, I live in constant fear that I'm going to lose my house, my job, like everything is going to just crumble around me. And that wasn't her experience, but that was still her thoughts. So I said, well, you might as well be living in Syria as opposed to this home in like Hampstead, seriously, because your body knows no difference. As you know, if you're in fight or flight constantly, you're going to go down that disease path because stress is a killer. It's a killer. Well, so your body can't heal in a sympathetic state because there's no time for digestion. There's no time for the reproductive. It's not time. Like, I think the, the best way someone ever put it to me was, well, you know, if we're talking about that reptilian mammalian brain, there's no time to make a baby when you're running, running no, the, no, uh, yeah. you know, some scary thing that, you yeah. know, we when did women run, we ran when it wasn't safe. Like these women that get up and jog for three, you know, 40, whatever minutes or miles or whatever it is. And then, and then they can't have babies. Stop running. Yeah. Stop running because it, if the body doesn't feel safe and in a safe environment and relaxed, then it's, it's so intelligent. It's not going to make a baby, but it's also going to make a baby. 
kind of switch off that digestive system, those that whatever is going on, those impairments, mm-hmm. however mm-hmm. small, are not going to heal as quickly because healing takes place in the parasympathetic. And yeah. almost yeah. like this is kind of well-known knowledge now. But then mm. what I wonder is why will people stand for 20 minutes at Pret or Starbucks to get an almond milk latte, but they will not do 20 minutes of it, it takes them three weeks to go. I did my breath work this morning and I'm like, yes, that's, it's such a big thing of like, I integrated it. Mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's like, what? this is something I'm still constantly figuring out is why I sometimes do it myself. I'll be like, Oh, there's a cute. I'm guilty. Definitely guilty. (laughs) It's worth it. Nice restaurant or something. Oh, wait, yeah, Yeah, I'll wait 30 minutes for that. But then sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I haven't done like, haven't done my morning routine. Well, the and nice I- thing about what you're suggesting is that you can wait in line at Starbucks and do your box breath. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's what I tell my clients. I'm like, you know, they say, oh, I don't, I'm just stressing out because I don't have time to do these exercises. And I say, uh-huh, are you breathing right now? And they go, yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, yeah. now's yeah. the perfect time if you like, whenever. Yeah. You know, yeah. you walking, sitting, driving, doesn't matter. Like, oh, there's some breathing exercise you can't do driving on the move, but some sure. breathing, yeah. you can breathe light and low wherever. Yeah. You, know, you don't need to sit down in a lotus position and no, um, no you don't need that. Like yeah. just integration over interruption. It is the phrase I repeat endlessly. Okay. In, in, I say, and to, to all my busy, very busy clients, I say, I don't need, I don't want to add anything to your to-do list. I know they're very long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm looking for is moments in your day. And I I see breath work. I say, we take about 24,000 breaths a day. Every single breath is a chance to take back a moment of your experience because this Western world that we live in is constantly trying to take our attention away from us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Constant, mm -hmm. like, you know, Instagram, look at me. Or, you know, this advert, look at me, this, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me. Whereas actually then we completely ignore ourselves and- Mm -hmm. All these things you're you're talking about, which I wish I learned in school, you know. Well, you know, What's to know these things in your twenties is amazing. Um, you know, it brings up my my second favorite saying, which is more on health, less on handbags. You know, people will spend the money on uh-huh. Gucci, blah blah blah, and I can promise you, none of those companies give a flying fig about you. Um, whereas working, finding a therapist who you really connect with, that's where your money should go because it means that you're going to have a much better experience in this life than, than, and I don't mean not just, you know, come to me or whatever and, you know, get you oh. know, whatever or whatever, but it's the, the emotional healing, you know, spend the money on the emotional healing. I have done, you know, hundreds of hours of therapy. Um, me too. because yeah, because I want to be really happy and being happy is one of the jo- most joyous things on the planet. I don't need anything outside of myself. I don't need any handbags. I don't need anything. You just so, hit the nail on the head right there though, right? I just, like, everything, it's all good. What is happiness? I had, this is a conversation I had with my therapist is I went, hang on, happy. And actually mm-hmm. we had a long discussion about actually being what we define as happy. And I'm thinking of the, yay, that thing say, you know, You've just, you've just, uh, you know, got a first in your degree. Ah, I'm so happy that I was like, you'd be miserable if you're like that all the time. Life would be terrible, you know. Yeah. And, and you'd be so in a par- you'd be in that sympathetic state as well. You'd be yeah. in that ah. Yeah, that Parent- that I call erratic, erratic happiness. And I said, can we swap the word happiness with contentment? And that mm-hmm. you describing that, and that is, you know, what I am working towards, which I really see as ultimate happiness, ultimate freedom, is yeah. they require nothing. Yeah, I am totally free from my external circumstances. You can take all my clothes away. You can take mm-hmm. my shoes away. You can kick me mm-hmm. out of my house. You can take mm-hmm. anything away from me that is external and I will be okay. And I call yeah. it, you know, it, I, I didn't coin this term, but core confidence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, I, I am free from my external circumstances. And there we see people like, you know, Mahatma Gandhi and people mm-hmm. that have been in horrific situations, but then do you, is it really that surprising that they have then become influencers of the entire planet because they have made the ultimate ultimate um almost sacrifice Mm. not even you know planning to Mm -hmm. where they are completely free from their external environment because they've actually been there yeah i mean i think that is the ultimate is it 
is it doable for the average person, perhaps in snippets? I mean, if I go back to my lady that in Hampstead, you know, she's in a beautiful home with a beautiful car, blah, 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 beautiful, 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 uh, and several Gucci bags. But, you know, that fear was taking over everything. And so it was like, no, I need, I need to address the fear. If I, I can give her the best diet in the world, I can give her the best supplements, I can give her the best homeopathics, I can give her the best whatever. Um, but that's going to do nothing if she's still in that fear state. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, we also tell people like, there's a wonderful Buddhist story, which I'm sure you know, which is, um, you know, the rain is, is, is the rain is, is the rain. It, it's to the bride, it's the awful thing to have happen, but to the farmer, it's a wonderful thing. You know, everything is 90% our reaction to it. It's 10% what happens, 90% our reaction to it. Oh yeah, the wonderful yeah. phrase, um, the problem is not the problem. The way you're thinking about the problem is the problem. Uh, okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this is where, you know, anybody listening, spend your money, your hard earned money on you. And I don't mean things. I mean, you know, your joy, your happiness, your trauma, your childhood crap, you know, see Georgie for breath work, which is a, an incredibly transformational process. If it's about health, you know, what I do, what everybody else does out there is yeah. so important. Yeah, 100 percent see a naturopath see i've worked with a naturopath i intend to work with one again because i learned as well i was like oh, come see me Boy, yeah, I'll, residence. Oh, 100%. <laughs> oh i'd love to do that by the way 100 percent offline we've got to do it but like i i was so naive before i saw a naturopath for one session we had a chat she gave me a diet plan i went great great i did two things off of that diet plan because i was like damn transformation is really hard uh, like, and scary to yeah and scary to, to change your diet and like learn all these things like looking at some recipes i was like this is overwhelming and you know mm. it's actually what was the root cause that i needed to slow down and do less and i said episode one of this podcast less is more changed my entire life and mm -hmm. it you know it's every, it's my whole mission now yeah. simplify desk like desperately ruthlessly eliminate hurry from your life simplify simplify less 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 and it's yeah. always and it's that's what people forget and i i say this a lot and i'm sure you experience this contactless payments deliver rue amazon you can have whatever you want now within 24 hours healing doesn't work like that it is a daily choice to show up for yourself and mm -hmm. it's not always going to be a smooth ride right yeah 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 I mean, even in my lifetime as a teenager, if I wanted a song, like let's say I wanted a band, I might look at it in, in my British magazines and go, ooh, that sounds really good. They sound really interesting. And then you'd have to take a bus downtown, order it. It would come in three months later and you had to buy the whole album. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, there were you'd have you'd get an answer message on your phone from the guy saying, Yeah, your record that you ordered three months is in, and then you'd have to wait till the Saturday to go down and get it. And that's my lifetime. That's we're talking 20 years, where 25 years or I guess more than that now. But it's still one song would take four months to listen to, you know, to actually have it in your hand. It could take that long. And yeah, we're the, now the, seconds. the question for that is yeah. rather than downloaded it, I thought of it now, yeah. it later. Whereas, yeah. you know, and you you wonder why, what is it, you know one in three marriages and in divorce is getting a bit heavy now but even I think back to like well there are many reasons for that of course but back in the way in the day we used to write letters you had to sit down you had to take time to think about what you wanted to say to that person what was most important to mm -hmm. say to that person. yeah write yeah. the letter put embody the letter post walk post the letter they receive it days later it was a process and now you think about it, you know, I can send a text and then go, ah, shit. That's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, yeah. that was just a moment, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You, someone said, don't put your emotions in a text. And yeah. I was like, that's the smartest thing you've ever said. They're like, just send a voice note or something because like it. it Everybody it, knows that they text me. I'm calling them right back. I hate texting. I hate voice notes. I'm not even, don't send me a voice note. I'm not going to listen to that. Call oh. me. It, I mean, I'm, I'm old school, you know. <laughs> it ruins relationships, you know, yeah, and it really, it really does because. It's not so. a true reflection and the way it is read is probably completely mm. different to the way it is sent. Yeah. Um, especially when you start adding in freaking emojis and th that it's a disaster. Um, 
and uh, the you know anytime I start dating someone and you know um, the the wonderful guy I'm with at the moment will vouch for this that the one of the first things I say is okay so texts are for funny gifts and locations times and locations that's all it's for oh uh, okay of like okay. meet me here at this time I was like that's great for it send me but emotions mm -mm. give me a call I don't yeah. want to hear an in text you I know like it. I it's like it boundaries right that are like yeah. You know, if only people wrote letters these days and had to sit and really think about it, it's yeah. again, what is that? It's conscious awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's taking your time and making space. And that I I've never heard I don't have time so many, so many times. If I had a pound for every time someone said I don't have time, I'd be a millionaire by now, you know? Cause yeah. yeah. It's huge. And I'm like, this is a problem. But yeah. Why, why don't we have time? Because time hasn't changed, has it? The actual uh, spinning of the planet. I don't think it's changed. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. What's yeah. happened? You yeah. know, what's happened? What's happened? I mean, I think the takeaway from all of this, because we're in agreement, is really just to get listeners to stop and think about just becoming more mindful about what's in their greatest and highest benefit on a daily basis and just when they're lying in bed go you know maybe i will just become creating that witness you know that buddhist concept of creating the witness and going here i am standing in line at you know cafe nero um or whatever and just you know text texting on my phone or flipping through instagram what would happen if i turned off my phone and just looked around at people and just you know engaged with the other sort of humans smiled at someone. Yeah. oh yeah smiled at someone i mean i Whenever I have a client with um, depression, so there's depression, of course, but there's um, something called, now I'm forgetting the word, obviously, um, anhedonia. Ooh, never heard that before. Okay, so anhedonia essentially translates as without hedonism. So that joyful state, that hedonic state mm -hmm. is missing. So this is where our consumer society really supports anhedonia because it's like buy that latest bag and you'll feel good for a few minutes but it's that deep depression's a big big word and there's you know capital d depression or lowercase d depression but anhedonia is just like meh meh everything's meh you know you buy a bag meh your woman in your woman in the beautiful house right yeah yeah i got everything anyway so yeah, you know, nothing, nothing really was nothing joyful people so many women have said to me, I just don't remember the last time I felt joyful the last time I laughed or the last time I felt happy, truly deeply happy that's something from my childhood what a what a great shame. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things I think breathwork is really good for for touching into you know the, that's the seismic shifts in the emotions that that can be done but. I have this um, exercise that I give to my clients with anhedonia and it's, you know, on public transport, if they're ever on it or on it or anywhere there's humans that you can look at, you know, you, you close your phone and I, I do it a lot on the tube, but um, you just look at every person across from you on the tube and you imagine giving them and energetically, not just imagine you get up energetically and give that person a, you know, a 10 second hug, like a big heartfelt hug. And, you know, it's really easy to do the people look like us. It's really easy to do to the kids. It's really easy to do people that actually look pretty safe. But when it comes down to that, that strange looking guy at the end, it might be a bit smelly and a bit weird. They get two hugs because essentially they're still a reflection of you. They're still a reflection of the, you know, the human experience and they need that. And, you know, when you give away love, you get it back. When you give away warmth and, and, and joy, you get it back so much. So, you know, I would say, yes, be mindful of where you're spending your energy, but also spend some energy giving love and kindness and joy to others because you'll get it back in return um, on some level. So, yeah, take that time out to be kindness, practice love and self-love, self-care, really big woo-woo-woo. Well, if you don't know how to do that, just hug somebody. You know, I I I tell a random stranger every day, um, and I get away with it because of the way I look in my accent. But I will tell some random stranger every day, "Wow, you look great," or "Nice smile," or um, "Cool shoes," or you know, every day. You know, it's something I I enjoy doing, and or you know, holding somebody, just touching their arm, and and sometimes I get the kind of, "Oh, who the hell are you?" But 
you'd be surprised at how often people will sink into that you know and um thank you yeah thank you yeah, for yeah. Contact and accepting me with with and I think a big point to make is here, uh, you know, we go back to Buddhist principles a lot. I love Buddhism. And, uh, you know, you, you take what you what you want from from any kind of, you know, um, spiritual practice or religion. Yeah, anything, anything. Yeah. I, without identifying, I think is a beautiful way. And it's it's that thing of of doing without expecting anything transactionally in return of like what Karami is talking about is not going I'm going to give you this and you better smile back. Otherwise I'm going to be upset. It's like, they don't need to smile back. Yeah. They don't need to, if you say, Hey, and they don't reply, smile. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you, you know, and that's, that's a really actually transformational process because I definitely used to be the person where I'd be like, Oh, that's rude. Mm -hmm. like, okay. Yeah. 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 And then I'm, then now I'm like, <laughs> you know, I hope, you know, I hope one day they'll be able to smile back at someone else because yeah. that, you know, and it's, it's that, that detachment from needing any, you know, that detachment from, I don't need a transactional experience because it, the yeah. more transactional experiences you have, the more I swear your relationship will become. So if I do this for you, will you do this for me? Totally. Totally. There's a beautiful thing I read recently that, you know, we, we can, happiness is a state it's not it ideally isn't dependent on anything and so is love love is a state when somebody says i you know my goal and i'm very grateful that i can honestly say that i am in love 99 percent of the time i am in love in in the state of love and you know um which is one reason why i would never give up my you know colonic irrigation practice because i love my clients i it is such an honor to pull shit out of people you know it is my great honor to get rid of their shit yeah get rid of their shit you know and to sit with them and just be in that space you know it is a huge honor and uh you know um if we think about you know i mean jesus washed people's feet you know it's we we forget that to serve is to have a life of meaning and if we're in a job that is doesn't have a, an act of service. I mean, right now, I'm sure you see so many people are like, what is my purpose? What is my purpose? And um, and that can also be translated as what is my medicine? What is the medicine I bring to the world? And people are all looking to be therapists and not all of us can be therapists. Not all of us are, are cap capable or cut out for it or can, can leave our nine to five jobs and be a therapist if there is such thing as a nine to five anymore. So when that life of service that we want to bring we can do that on a daily basis by being kind to others and just smiling and just you know um showing up for another human being that can be the medicine they give to the world by just being the example of somebody who is the embodiment of kindness mm -hmm. and you know and that can be done even when you're just standing in line at, at cafe nero and saying to that person behind the counter you know have a really good day you know thank you so much for this amazing flat white it's i love this flat white this is amazing thank you so much and um you know i said to the bus driver and i was getting off earlier today i was like thank you so much for doing your job it's so important and he stopped and looked at me and said thanks you know mr bus driver you know, thank you, because thank you. I don't have a car. And I, you know, I really appreciate your job. And it's just oh, so much fun. Like, it's, it's the bin man, right? That, you know, of, who's like, well, thank goodness, yeah. because, and, and Mr. Cleaner, and who, thank goodness, people, you know, are in those jobs. And we'll, yeah. we'll and those people that will do it, you know, do it with a smile, because that, yeah. maybe that is their dharma. Yeah. Maybe that is their mission and maybe that is their purpose. And I'm not saying that uh, some people would laugh at that and think it's a joke, but no, you know, you can be a bin man or a cleaner and be of service to the world. You don't oh, need yeah. to be a CEO to be yeah. of service. You, it doesn't Or matter. even a therapist or even, a you know, whatever. A, yeah. a stay-at-home mother and, and maybe huge, that's the dharma, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a huge, huge job. job huge job. I probably the biggest job in the world is being a mom, which is why I didn't do it. Because quite frankly, it scares the crap out of me. You know, like just no thank you, you know, heads up to all those moms out there. Kia kaha, stay strong sister, because way too big a job for me. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I respect any mother. It Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a huge, a huge responsibility. Um, Massive.
Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Caramia, give lucky <laughs> time, be grateful. What a freaking talk about going around the world. <laughs> it's uh, honestly, uh, uh, yeah, your, you know, your knowledge blows my mind every time. And you, you just, Bless you. you express it in, in such an articulate and curious and beautiful, <laughs> humble way. And I'm just very grateful to have met you to be, you know, to right have back at you, part. gorgeous. Yeah. Right back uh, at so you. Thank you for, for coming on. And oh, my pleasure. It's been fun. Sharing your wisdom is amazing. <laughs> okay, we'll see you soon. Much love and have a lovely holiday season and uh, we'll stay in touch. 100%. Okay.